My name is Jim Young, and I'm the in-between minister at Allenville Presbyterian Church here in Allenville and at Knox Presbyterian Church in Floss. On behalf of the Kirk Session of Allenville Presbyterian Church, I welcome you to this memorial service for the people of Sarah Vista Long-Term Care Home in Elmville. Let's worship God. I'm here to remind you that death is a mystery whenever it comes, but it is never the end, it's always a new beginning. We know this because Jesus went down into the darkness of death and came back from the lake, the sun, in full strength. The death and resurrection of Jesus led to the glory of a new morning. We follow him through the door of death into a life of perfection and peace, the life of God himself. Let's worship God, let's sing hymn number 317. Corinthians chapter 13. 
It is for this life only that Christ has given us hope. We of all people are most to be pitied. But the truth is, Christ was raised to life. The first fruits of the harvest of the dead. For since it was a man who brought death into the world, a man also brought resurrection of the dead. As in Adam all die, so in Christ all things be brought to life. But each in proper order, Christ the first fruits, and afterwards at his coming, those who belong to Christ. But you may ask, how are the dead raised? In what kind of body? What stupid questions? The seed you sow does not come to life unless it has first died. And what you sow is not the body that shall be, but a bare grain of wheat, perhaps, or something else. And God gives it the body of his choice, each seed its own particular body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown as a perishable thing is raised imperishable. Sown in humiliation, it is raised in glory. Sown in weakness, it is raised in power. Sown a physical body, it is raised a spiritual body. And finally, a gospel reading from John, chapter 6. Jesus said, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never turn away. I have come down from heaven to do not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. It is his will that I should not lose even one of those he has given me, but you raise them all up on the last day. For it is my Father's will that everyone who sees the Son and has faith in him should have eternal life. And I will raise them up on the last day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
God made each of us for freedom. That's what I need you to remember from this service. All we ever have had here and now in this world is a taste of freedom, a promise of things to come. God knew us before we entered our mother's womb, Scripture tells us. God gave us our bodies, and these bodies will finally weigh us down. They won't do all we want or need them to do. They keep us from knowing real freedom. Most of us, when we reach my age, can't run as fast or work as hard or dance the way that we'd like to. Our body ties us down and ties us up. Some of us more than others. Some of us were never athletes. Some of us don't sing well. Some of us have bodies that wear out too soon. All of us finally understand that we have to walk with the help of others. And that we're not free to do simple, normal things. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's very hard. But God made us for freedom. And we will be free. I don't remember a life, a day or a year in our life that we didn't celebrate Easter in church. I didn't do it this year thanks to COVID-19. Remember with me please the Easter story. Jesus was buried in the tomb. Do you remember what happened after that? God raised him up, didn't he? God gave him a body that didn't hold him down. His new body could go where he wanted it to go, pushing through rock, going through closed doors. He could be with his friends wherever they were. God gave him a new body, a resurrection body, a body to set him free. And God does that for us too. God gives us freedom, new bodies, to set us free. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15 that there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. A mortal body and a resurrection body. God promises us a body that will truly set us free. Now, as we all know, when we think about it, that doesn't mean we simply accept it. When we see people who aren't free now, we just can't say God will set him or her free someday. So we don't need to do anything now. Now that's why we have churches like Elmville Presbyterian in this community. Church people know what God intends for us. Church people are here to help us find freedom now. Church people are here to reach out and help anyone we see. Who doesn't know about Jesus or understands freedom? We visit when COVID-19 is not with us. People who are physically challenged by their mortal bodies. We support them. We share ourselves in Jesus with them. And once we know the freedom that God offers us, we will never be satisfied with anything else. The Gospels and Scripture tell us that God set Jesus free. And as we live together in this 21st century world of ours, 
just as it seems there's no more we can do after the do so much. There was no God can do the rest. God will give freedom to everyone who has suffered in this world, as well as to those who have had only a taste of it. Most of us have shared a hospital room with someone, and the day comes when the other one goes home. You're sorry to see them go, but you're glad they're finally free. We've all lost people from our lives. Sometimes after a long, frustrating illness, we really miss them, but they're finally free. They can begin to live again, but we are left behind to grieve. Grieve for ourselves. We're still limited, still unwilling to set others free when we can. In this short time together, we're here to thank God for our memories and the promise of freedom. We're also here to thank God for the knowledge we have that sets us free from the fear of death. Simply because of Easter, when Jesus died on Good Friday, God gave him life again and set him free. And those who have found hope, faith, and compassion in Jesus the Christ, those who belong to him, are promised that same life and that same freedom. Join me, please, in giving thanks for Easter's promise. All of Jesus' people are Easter people. And Easter's promise, freedom, and life are yours. Amen. Please join me in the prayer, and at the end of the prayer will come the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray together. Loving God, we give you thanks for all the lives we remember during this memorial service. We give you thanks for all that those lives achieved. And individually, as we remember them, we give thanks for private memories, memories that are tender and joyful, and much more cherished now. And for some that are much too deep for tears, we ask that you also help us remember the good and happy times, the memories that will always stay with us. Give us the grace not to be haunted by the might of beings, and to find strength in what is yet to be. To believe that neither death nor life, neither things present nor things to come, can separate us or those that we love from your love found in Jesus Christ our Lord. And we offer our thanks for the mystery of eternal life, the world beyond which all things are made plain, in which wounds are healed, in which the great questions are resolved, in which all things are renewed, in which mercy and grace and love are the great realities. Father God, who has set our own feet on our own road through life, and who knows, we see the way sometimes and stumble often. Guide us around the obstacles in our path. Be with us through the many perils in the world. Help us find your peace. We pray together in the words that Jesus taught. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever.
God which is beyond all understanding. Guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, be with us all now and forevermore.